This is Twit. Last Thursday, Chris Miller posted on Fostodon, Hi all, we're still under a major DDoS attack, and that's why mobile and desktop clients are not currently working. We've had to put the site behind Cloudflare temporarily until the attack stops. We're looking at other long-term solutions, but we need to get through the current moment first. For now, use the web interface. Thanks for your patience. And as of yesterday, when I last looked, that attack was still ongoing. Fostodon, as its name suggests, you know, F-O-S-S-T-O-D-O-N, is the largest Mastodon instance inhabited by open source software denizens. And sadly, this most recent attack marks only the latest in a growing string of DDoS attacks that have hit and easily brought down unprotected Mastodon server instances over the past few months. And Leo, you were saying now that that uh, Mastodon.social is yeah, in trouble. Yeah, Gargron, he, who created Mastodon's, runs Mastodon.social. His was down. He he tooted uh, a couple of days ago. And last week, uh, during this show, in fact, I think it was, I was getting a lot of messages from people saying, is your site, is twit.social down? We run a Mastodon instance. And I checked, you know, we have a thing called Sidekick running that talks about traffic. And uh, in particular, how many queues are open and how many have been processed, how many haven't and how many have failed. And it was through the, the number of queues is through the roof, which is sometimes a sign of, uh, you know, too many people using the site. But nothing had happened for that to make that the case. So while I don't know, I'm going to guess that was also a DDoS attempt. There, there people were flooding us with the posts. With, or or with, with connection attempts. And so yeah, that, or that connection would have attempts. overflowed the, That's right. the inbound queue. Yeah, Psychic yeah. would have died. Yeah. So anyway, what's happened is, and here's a, like some anecdotal examples we just had, the pace of these attacks has increased significantly after Mastodon gained a huge amount of attention thanks to the mass exodus from Twitter following Elon's takeover and his subsequent actions, which you know struck many as not being in the best interests of neither the larger Twitter community nor their own individual uh, best interests. So fearing the approaching end of Twitter, many jumped over to the Mastodon's decentralized model, which inherently prevents a repeat of essentially, you know, what Elon is doing at Twitter. Um, it also means fact, that DDoS can't bring the whole thing down, right? Because, well, it, it can't bring, you know, individual being, instances down. Exactly. Be, being being federated, you, there's other places you could go. There, There's a guy, uh, Fedetips, uh, F-E-D-I-T-I-P-S, at Mastodon.social. Yeah, that's good. As, yeah, in, yeah. as in federated tips. And he posted, or that person posted, the Mastodon.social server is currently under a heavy DDoS attack and may not work properly. The... 12,164 other servers on the network are unaffected. This is part of the reason why federated networks are a good idea. If one server goes down, the others work fine. The more spread out we are on small and medium-sized servers, the harder it is for anyone to take down the network because there's no obvious target. He says there are also many other reasons why federation is good. And then he provided a, a, a link to fedi.tips slash why is the fediverse uh, hyphenated. So, you know, there's there's not much more to say here other than to note that fedi.tips is certainly correct. On the one hand, the nearly week-long DDoS attack against Fostodon has rendered its mobile and desktop clients inoperable. But thanks to their web front end moving behind Cloudflare's front end protection, at least their web interface is operable and they're remaining on the air. As I noted recently when we were talking about the most recent DDoS connection rate attack record being broken, no standalone server on the Internet can withstand today's DDoS attacks, not even <laughs> for an instant. Uh, is that because they're amplified? Is, is, that, is that why they're yes, so strong? It, yes. Today's modern IoT botnet-based attacks are large enough to swamp even medium-sized bandwidth providers. That, that is to say, you know, it might even be that the traffic doesn't actually reach your server, 
because it brings down the routers upstream of your server because these attacks are just so big. So it's not that your server is even down. It's that the, the traffic from outside on the Internet can't, e can't even reach it because the attack just swamps the, the, the aggregating routers before they have a chance to even get to your server. So the only recourse, I mean only, if you have to be on the net, is to move behind the protective skirts of one of today's major DDoS protection services. The problem is, such service is not free, unless the service wishes to provide such service charitably. And that's one thing that sort of annoyed me. Elsewhere um, on Reddit, the Fostadon admin was grousing a little bit about the need to be rescued by a commercial service such as Cloudflare. You know, in my opinion, they should consider themselves incredibly fortunate that such a facility like Cloudflare exists. Otherwise, they would be off the net for as long as the DDoSing Cretans wanted to keep them off the net. And, you know, I have had experience with that in, in my past. And, and it is, in fact, uh, we got an interesting graph coming up next, which gives us a sense for the scale of the problem, not not only in attack size, which, as we've said, is now just, I mean, it's incredible amounts of attack where it's, its you know, to call it overkill is uh, is an understatement because it it would just, the attacks are so large that they would, they just melt the wires, essentially, <laughs> between uh, the, 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 the server being attacked and the outside world. This episode of Tech Break is brought to you by ACI Learning. Audit, IT, and cybersecurity skills become outdated in about 18 months. If you run an IT, cybersecurity, or audit department, or lead a learning and development group, ACI Learning can craft an effective, affordable training solution to keep your team future-proof. Visit go.acilearning.com twit to elevate your talent. 